We now celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent, so let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You know, as we gather together, our Lent seems to be flying by, and so it's important that we don't miss these opportunities to learn a little more about God and maybe a lot more about ourselves and our relationship with God. So as we begin for a moment, let's just reflect on how important it is that we truly appreciate each and every day that we have. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us for the sin we have committed. Bring each one of us home to everlasting life. Yeah. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant that with devotion and eager faith, we may hasten toward the solemn celebration to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants to the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest, while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. By the streams of Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. On the aspens of that land, we hung up our harps. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. For there our captors asked of us the lyrics of our songs, and our despoilers urged us to be joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue tell silence if I ever forget you. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not, if I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. Let my tongue tell silence if I ever forget you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy, because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens, in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace, in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, and we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, 
Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come toward the light, so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A man asked his wife what she'd like for her birthday. I'd love to be six again, she replied. So on the morning of her birthday, he got her up bright and early, and off they went to a local theme park. What a day! He put her on every ride in the park, the death slide, the screaming loop, the wall of fear, everything there was. Wow! Five hours later, she staggered out of the theme park, her head reeling and her stomach upside down. Right to a McDonald's they went where her husband ordered her a Big Mac, with, along with her uh, extra order of fries, refreshing chocolate shake. Then was off to the movies to see the latest kids movie. She got hot dogs, popcorn, soda, M&Ms. What a fabulous adventure. Finally, she wobbled home with her husband and collapsed into bed. He leaned over and lovingly asked, Well, dear, what was it like being six again? With one ear open, she said, You idiot, I meant my dress size. <laughs> the moral of the story is, if a woman speaks and a man is there to hear her, he will get it wrong anyway. That's why I didn't get married. No, not really. Anyway, story for today. Um, in her book, Loud and Clear, um, New York Times columnist Anna Quindlin uh, shares this observation. I'd like to read it to you. The biggest mistake I made as a parent is the one that most of us make. I did not live in the moment enough. This is particularly clear now that the moment is gone, captured only in photographs. There was one picture of my three children sitting in the grass on a quilt and the shadow of a swing set on a summer day, ages six, four, and one. And I wish I could remember what we ate and what we talked about and how they sounded and how they looked when they slept at night. I wish I had not been in such a hurry to get on to the next thing. Dinner, bath, book, bed. I wish I had treasured the, the, the doing a little more and the getting it done a little less. I think sometimes that's what kind of happens. We lose our focus. But you know what we do now? Because we can't change the past, sometimes we just focus on those things that can't change because they are the past. Sometimes we waste our time on those things. And you know what? It's so important that we let them go. We've got to let God take care of those things that we cannot change. What we need to do is to focus on today. I think in my years of um, covering hospitals, the one thing I learned from dying people that, are, that we're with it, we're talking about it, they always talk about the regrets for the most part, the things they didn't do that they wanted to have done, and the things they had done that they wished they hadn't do. And all I remember saying to them is, you know what? Let God take care of those things. Go to heaven knowing that God has already taken care of those things. So I ask you this fourth Sunday of Lent, to let God take care of those things. Enjoy today because God gave us this day to enjoy. God bless. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he would come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. We continue now with these prayers. <clears throat> For the church, may it be a passionate place in carrying out the good works that draw people into the light of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are lost, may they find a way to journey back to our loving Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people. May God free us from all of our spiritual blindness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the sick, the hungry, and those facing difficult <clears throat> problems, may God touch them with his endless love and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, may they dwell in God's house forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Loving God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Lenten journey. May we truly allow you to guide us on the rest of the journey, which will someday lead us to the kingdom of heaven where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we this bread to give you, which earth is given and human hands have made, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we eat this wine to give you food of the vine, work with human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Friends, let's pray that our gifts will be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May we accept the sacrifice on our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of God's holy church. We place before you these offerings, O oh Lord, which bring eternal remedy praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as it is fitting for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, you have given your children a sacred time for renewing and purifying our hearts, that freed from the disordered afflictions, we may also deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. So once again, we join our loved ones in heaven as we pray this hymn of an ending praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. Similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop. Remember Peter de Nora, Dolores Jedjdich, Andrew Pereja, Peter and Alvina Meganello, and the deceased members of the Anselone family, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they were united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection for all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We now pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await with joyful hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not in our sin, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of our Lord be with each one of you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let's pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to you, and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God's blessing truly guide us in all that we do, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to you.